Hello, hi, good evening. Thank you so much for coming out and uh, celebrating this with us this evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Germany as always. Although my German is terrible because I did really bad at school with German. So the only bit of German I remember is Ach du Liebeszeit and know how to sing Odu Freilinger, which I won't promise you, I won't do tonight. But um, part of why we brought you together is because you're trusted friends and partners with us in, in this ever-changing industry that we're part of that is media. And we're going through some radical changes. We as a company have been through some, and are still going through, some pretty radical changes. And the more I speak to various people, it doesn't matter where they are in the world, we all feel that we're, we're going through it together. And so really what I thought I would do is, is just sort of take a few minutes of your time today to sort of look at what's going on in the landscape and sort of share with you our vision about how we think we can help make a difference with you as, as we move on. Is this speed of English okay for you? Good. You can tell me you can do this or do this. We're all okay. Okay, good. So um, I called this presentation a volatile state of convergence. I mean, volatile, I think it is. I think it's pretty, pretty crazy in terms of the industry right now. I mean, I've been working in media, I guess, the last 25 years. And I think this particular moment has probably been one of the most challenging for me, partly because when I started off as a designer, I wanted nothing to do with television. I didn't really want anything to do with computers, if I was honest. I wanted to paint pretty pictures with my hands as a designer. And everything has changed in my life, and I'm sure in yours as well. And I think really we're in a situation where a storm is brewing. We're, you know, we're feeling this pressure mounting. I think there's financial pressure upon us. I think there's time pressure upon us. There's client expectation. You know, there's, it's, it's everything, the more data, not enough data, more screens, not enough technology, too much technology. Everything just seems to be going a little bit crazy. And the question that I keep asking myself, and I'm going to ask you tonight, is how are we going to prepare for this storm that is coming in right now? This storm really is around this word convergence. On the surface, it's very easy. Everything will take a digital connection, and we'll have one system that will speak to every screen. But you, as well as I know, that's not actually the reality. It's actually very complicated in terms of looking at that. And to try and get around this one very simple phrase, which sounds like this very easy utopia, is a complete and utter nightmare. Different agency thinking from television to online, different uh, budgetary restraints, branding, direct response, the different screens. What is mobile anyway? What is online when my television's connected? Everything suddenly becomes, you know, very easy for me on stage to talk about this and a huge problem on the other end to try and make it work. So I thought, you know, we kind of sort of look at this whole idea of television. You know, and, and they said the revolution will not be televised, it'll be social. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's take the biggest media opportunity on the planet, the Super Bowl. You know, it's where most television money is dropped in any one single event on the planet, and still is. The average 30-second uh, TV spot uh, this year was $3.8 million. That's more than our marketing budget altogether, and it's on one TV spot. And it's most bigger than most people's digital budgets. And yet, that's a 30-second drop in the ocean for, for most brands. Now, as a company that manages 80% of all those TV spots, it's a huge, big deal for us. There's a lot of pressure to make sure that we get it right to the quality and everything else. But the interesting thing this year is that 100% of all those TV ads, those spots, were in HD. Finally, what happened was brands realized that the quality of their content and message could no longer be compromised 
they had to make the shift and said, we have to go full on high definition. So important is it for them to get their message and brand right. The quality is, is an important thing. But more so than that, there were 48 million social interactions around this event this year. And when you look at the Twitter feeds, out of the 21 million tweets that happened, 30% of those were about ads. Now that's a big number. I'm kind of used to playing with 0.3%. And suddenly, you kind of, something significant has happened. You see, I've sat there with media people and television people and talked about online video, and they look at you like, I have a high definition television, and you're talking to me about a banner ad? And you talk to them about display advertising or interactive rich media, and they glaze over. But the one thing everybody realizes now is social. Maybe it's they got Google, maybe it's they got the whole search, maybe it's they, but they get social. And suddenly this opens up data of the connection of the quality of the assets and the connection with data that we have never seen before. And it gives them new opportunities to measure success. And so suddenly TV people are suddenly switching on onto the importance of, of, of being able to measure in a very different way to how they've done. And from a consumer perspective, that's incredibly big because we spend 2.7 hours a day now socializing. That's about twice what you spend eating. Not quite sure if the figures stack up here in Germany. We spend a little bit longer eating, I think. Or well, certainly drinking. But, um, so I thought I'd talk to you tonight about a couple of things that I shouldn't talk about. Politics and religion. Politics, interesting one. You know, Obama and the Canberra's presidential campaign this year. Obama's second term would be a rerun. Now I love this. We just couldn't survive that. We need someone who could turn around. This is Romney's TV ad campaign that he spent twelve point six million dollars on. American Crossroads is responsible. And uh, he had Clint Eastwood doing it. Which I thought was really interesting. I mean I just thought it's like, you know. Do you feel lucky, punk? Go ahead and make my day. I thought that would have been a much better campaign, you know, sort of carrying on. But it's interesting when you sort of looked at this whole campaign because suddenly there was an overspill into social media. And people who'd been connected and finding friends from 20, 30 years ago were suddenly finding them having a voice, suddenly having an opinion. And they were like saying, how can anybody vote for this? And it was the same on both sides. And between that and the gun situation that happened subsequently, you know, within the, in the Connecticut, what you found is that people were just unfriending people. And so suddenly where they all got together as a group and a friend, it was like, sorry, I don't believe what you think anymore. And just because of a single opinion, it's like, well, that's it. I'm unfriending you. Such is the power. It's not like I agree to differ with you. There was a massive reaction. And I think this is the start of what we're about to start seeing with brands. You take it too far, they're just going to go, no, unfriend, dislike. It's about the consumer power. I mean, I saw this on the back of a business card, which I thought was really good. I wish I had this on my card. I promise not to unfriend you unless you annoy me. I thought it's a great one. But what was interesting is that the Republicans and Democrats both agree on one thing, and that's they both use you know, DG for their advertising campaign technology. Um, and so it leads me on to religion. And uh, yes, that is me in the corner. But um, this is the Vatican crowd in 2005, when the last Pope came on board. That was it this year. I'll go back. 2005. 2013. That's crazy, hey. Now, I, I, I love the iPad. Have you seen them when they're walking around with the iPad? I can't wait for the new Apple TV to come out because people will be doing the same, you know, you expect them walking around. My camera's bigger than yours. But it's interesting, in a world, you know, where every, all the TV cameras are hidden away from what goes on inside the Vatican. You know, they're still burning little bits of paper. You know, everyone's focused on that, you know, all the HD cameras zoomed in really close to this tiny little chimney in a world where all technology is banned. And they're still writing bits of paper. And yet it was interesting that of the billion, you know, Catholic followers were out there, 
you know, 2.3 million people were watching this thing on how to become a pope. It was like a YouTube clip that actually showed you well, what's going on and how does it work anyway. And the moment the white smoke actually happened, as they, they selected, there were instantly 700 YouTube clips uploaded simultaneously as a way of getting the message out. And for a, an institution that is very, you know, and always has been in through history, very difficult to embrace change, suddenly, you know, in all this fire, the new pope turns around and starts using Twitter. Such is the change of modern culture that it doesn't, there is nothing that is exempt anymore from politics, religion, consumers, brands, everybody has suddenly found they've got to be part of this, this cultural change that's happening. And you think about it, you've got to be thinking about stuff five years ago. We didn't even have iPads five years ago. Facebook wasn't around five years ago. And you suddenly kind of think, okay, well, five years ago, and where we are now, and the implication of that is Flash and HTML5. And for a rich media company that you know, developed stuff in Flash way back in the 90s, you know, that's a big change, a fundamental change. And so the question is, well, what's going to happen five years from now? What is the technology that you're going to be having to embrace and look at there? Now, let me talk to you about Steve Mann. I don't even know the story of Steve Mann. Steve Mann is the guy who uh, evolved wearable computers from the 80s to now. I kind of think Christoph Benning looks a little bit like the, uh, the last one there. But um, great guy in terms of doing it. But McDonald's, well, they're not loving it because in Paris, I don't know what you call the thing, he went into Paris with his wearable camera on and some, youths, some young guys said about him and, and started wrestling to the ground and beating him up to try and take the camera off his face. They said it was an invasion of privacy of being recorded without being asked for. And, uh, you know, he said, the angle he tried to grab my glass and try to pull it off my face, except the thing is physically mounted and screwed into his skull. You know, such is the passion of this guy. And uh, it's quite funny because even though Google Glasses are not actually available right now, West Virginia in America has now tried to pass a law to say you cannot drive while wearing Google Glasses because they think it's going to be a distraction. The mobile phone's distraction, wait, well, Google Glasses, which is ironic when you think the technology was invented for pilots to fly planes, right? And uh, another restaurant in Seattle, so outraged by what was going on in Paris, they've decided to put up a poster saying, Google Glasses are banned on these premises. And I love this symbol that's now starting to run around the internet as people are starting to panic and fear again. Why? Because change is emotional. It's hard for us to embrace whatever is new and next, and we assume the worst. And, you know, emotion's not a bad thing, especially when I think about video, because video is the most powerful way of us connecting to make you laugh and cry and, and all the emotions that video is so good at doing especially from a story message. So we were in CES in Vegas at the start of the year, and you know, it says you'll see it walking around, you know, this was him in front of a 110-inch screen, which is uh, amazing in its own right. TVs are becoming like wallpaper, but then you realize this is a new 4K television. Now, the prices have now been announced. They're about $25,000. So I've just ordered one for the bedroom, you know. But, um, $25,000 for a TV. Seriously. Sorry? Go for it. Yeah, yeah, okay. But uh, UHD makes you need it's four times the quality of your high definition TV. It makes you feel like you're old school with the bought a TV recently. And then that's before you see the one that's after it. And there was a demonstration there of an 8K television, which is uh, what, 16 times the quality of your standard broadcast high definition content. And like you were literally looking up close, and only when you got up close could you see the pixels. And I was talking to one of the manufacturers, and they were saying, you know, how realistic is this? And he said, okay, a HD TV is like having a one megapixel camera. He said, does your phone have higher quality than that now? 
And I'm like, yeah, this is right. That's the change that television is going through. And, and it kind of really puts things into perspective. But TV's just not getting bigger and higher quality, it's becoming interactive. And Samsung recently have just announced that they will now support HTML5 on their television interfaces. So suddenly there's a point of crossover between the online and the television world where we're able to start taking assets and start to move them around these multiple screens. What Flash tried to do, HTML5 is likely to succeed in. And that's before we look at the new H.265 video format that's about to come out as well, which reduces the video down to half a game. Social interaction. Well, we don't just sit back and passively look at TV anymore, do we? we television and what we do with that large screen is different for different people. Where we all want it to go is the idea of the right ad at the right time to take a digital thinking and apply it on that main big screen. And this really is the utopia of convergence when we start thinking through television. But to me, I think it's something more fundamental than that. I think it's the quality of television assets, the production, the value of you know, getting the lighting and the camera and the videos and everything correctly, and then suddenly bringing the online up to where television standards are. And all the data and all the connection points and the interactions and, and all the different things over that, that online has, and suddenly bringing television up to the accuracy of measurement and all the capabilities that online has. And so to me, when I look at convergence, it really is, is about this whole idea of quality and engagement suddenly coming together. I think that's the fundamental point of what we're seeing. And so it kind of makes you think from an agency perspective, well, you know, I remember as a, you know, working in the agencies of brainstorming with bits of paper. You know, you kind of think of all this collaboration, whereas now, I think most people feel like that when they're kind of planning stuff. Skype, phone calls late at night, Excel spreadsheets, yeah? And so you kind of finally realize this massive sort of shift, and it's almost like we're kind of going into survival mode. So when I sort of speak to people in agencies, it's kind of how we feel right now in terms of, of, of working in the agency. And when you kind of step back and look at these states of convergence, I think really it's, it's almost like solid, liquid, and gas. I mean, you look up the dictionary definition, you know, of the word volatile, and it says when a substance changes and explodes, and I think that is kind of what's actually happening now as the internet starts to touch cars or your heating or your lighting or your televisions or your refrigerators. It's suddenly this thing which used to be contained within your little PC has suddenly exploded and going everywhere. You know, and that's what this volatile about. You know, it used to be solid, the first computers. It's very much now liquid. But where we're going to is gas. This is a screen, an interactive touchscreen, playing Fruit Ninja on air. It's amazing. But really, it's not even just about the screens. It's this whole concept about being in the cloud. And nowhere do we see this more prevalent than in video. Because this whole idea of video being everywhere across every screen. I mean, think about television. You know, what is TV when I could suddenly download something on iTunes to my phone and then sit on a plane or, or a train and watch it? And then the iPhone becomes the iPad and I'm watching video away from home. And now we're moving into a situation where I can stream live video to my phone anywhere in the world through 4G as the TV companies allow, allow this to become possible. But the next change is the fact of when I'm watching my content on my little screen on a car, and then suddenly I walk into the home, what actually happens is the fact that I'm just able to sort of carry on playing from exactly the point I left off on a different screen. I'm not talking about mirroring. I'm not talking about, let's take a great quality film, take it down to a little small file, and then when I walk back into my lovely two, three thousand euro television, I have a huge pixelated screen. I'm talking about having a video over there and a video over here, and they talk to each other. You downloaded a book off Amazon or iTunes, anyone? 
Yeah, and you've done the bookmarks so that when you go from one device to another, it just opens up at the same page. It's the same thinking that's now being applied to the television and video industry. So this whole idea of continuous play, it's just there's two video files and they just talk to each other. And so suddenly what's happening with the new realm of television is we're starting to move into this continuum, never being out of the, the cycling. It knows where you are, it knows where you're sort of going. And video is important because we spend about five hours a day with the video in our lives. That's basically about 14 years of your life. By the time you get to 65, you've spent watching video. So it's a big deal. Except when you realize that in many countries now, that the new broadband generation prefers watching video on a PC rather than on a television set. And so suddenly it's massively shifted in terms of how they're consuming it. In fact, over three quarters of the world now watch online video, whether it's on PCs or mobile or tablets or any other device. Three quarters of the planet. That's a lot of people you know, who've, who've made this shift and redefined what do we know as of television. And it opens this whole idea. I mean, television, as it becomes interactive, the idea of stopping and pausing and playing and streaming and connecting to YouTube and everything else. It's just how I interact with this big screen as the technologies begin to blur. 48% of people who have these new televisions or have connected devices, Xbox or whatever, are now streaming content on their television. So we've, the consumers have massively shifted in terms of how and, and, and they're accessing video content. And not only that, but the recent studies have come out that said that 87% are noticing ads when they're watching streaming content because they are choosing the content in a more powerful way, connecting with it. They're more engrossed with the content and therefore they're more likely to see your brand message. People say TV's dying. Well, live TV is kind of shifting. Um, digital video recording, you know, recording is slightly going up, as you'd expect. This, to me, is the big change. Discs to streams. So discs are pretty much dying now. Video streaming is, is picking up. And they're kind of level pegging right now. So we've already made that massive shift. They're at a touch point. All data from here, we'll see streaming just go further up. And it'll be interesting to see what that has on these two graphs at the top. But the other thing is the second screen. This idea of being able to watch a screen. And we're moving from, yeah, I'm checking emails on my phone, to actually finding ways to connect with a television. Uh, the only data I could find, I apologize if this was US data, 280 million TV apps were downloaded in America alone last year. And I would hazard a guess that across Europe it would be the same figures. So you're talking about not just you know, searching or something, but people who want to continue the story on and find out more about what they're watching or use it as a remote control. So suddenly there's an environment which they're sitting in which we should and find ways of talking and connecting to. 900 million phones, 172 million tablets will be shipped this year. That's over a billion devices that are capable of receiving video just this year alone. And when you think about the, the Mashable published a report last week that said for the first time they've seen a massive shift. PC shipments were down nearly 14% year on year. Now I think of the word online and I think of PC or laptop. And you think of browsers and you think of flash or whatever and suddenly everything of the word online just on this stat alone has got to change. You know, we're seeing ads that we serve on the MediaMind platform now. You know, they're not bought or sold as MediaMind, as, as mobile campaigns, as standard, standard web campaigns. But I'm seeing minimum of five, average of 40, and sometimes over 60% of the ads we're serving down being picked up by mobile devices over Wi-Fi. Such is the shift that consumers are in. And it says, well, have you got your HTML5 ads ready? Are you building them? Are you getting them prepared? especially when 50% of tablets are watching video content. And it means that by next year, 91% of the traffic on the internet will be video. Now when you consider that this time last year it was about 40%, that's a 
that's a massive shift in two years. You know, that's such a huge growth in terms of video. And so a comment that uh, you know, was thrown around a couple of years ago, I think is probably more relevant today than it's ever been. And that's, we're seeing an increasing blur between the TV and the PC, with on-demand content flowing seamlessly between the two. So it got me thinking about how we're watching television and how we're accessing video content. And the most interesting thing I came across a, a little while ago when we were sort of talking about it internally, apparently there's a big trend of housewives watching TV or on the iPad whilst cooking. Now I kind of thought that was like watching recipe programs or learning how to, to cook. But no, they're just watching television on their iPad. And it kind of, it was quite interesting because, you know, I remember getting a portable television at 14, right? And, um, you know, to me, a portable TV was probably about as portable as a microwave oven, really, in, in hindsight. You know, they were like big boxes, weren't they? They had to carry around. And for the first time, we're seeing a truly portable TV, and the data backs it up. Because you think about the iPad and is watching, downloading and watching it on an aeroplane or on a train, but actually 63% of all video on a tablet is actually consumed in the home. So it changes what we think about television, especially when you kind of think, okay, 40% is watched in the bedroom, nearly 40% is watched in the living room, so what, we'd rather, and I've seen this, I've gone into people's houses, they've got the TV on, but they haven't got any connection, but they're downloading stuff, and they've actually got the iPad on the table, on the coffee table in front of them, and they're watching you know, especially foreigners, you know, where they're kind of wanting to sort of stream content. They've got the lap, their, their iPad there and they're watching content. Have you seen that? Anyone seen this as well? People are sitting there, they've got a TV on, it's switched off and they're watching TV on the iPad in the lounge. That's great. But this is 12% in the kitchen and 9% in the bathroom. Hold on. 9% in a bathroom. Now, I don't kind of know what you're wiping. Sorry, I mean sort of a swiping. Um, but I'm not using your iPad ever again. I mean, 9% are watching it in the bathroom. That's a crazy number. I mean, you used to sort of like, you used to wait for your dad to sort of come out of the toilet because he'd sort of taken in the newspaper. And now it's the iPad, you know? So it means that we have to focus on in-stream. You know, the whole, everybody, all the data points are suggesting that video is, uh, continues to sort of attract new consumers, new advertisers, new brand messages, because it has just better audience retention. You look at the kind of the growth of, of online, uh, just specifically, you know, this bit at the bottom is rich media. It's starting to stagnate, it's starting to sort of level off. Um, why? Because this whole brand response discussion is starting to kind of be split between brand and response as DR goes crazy, but the brand starts shifting over into online video. And that'll be a 7 point, you know, 7.7 .7 billion industry they reckon you know within the next couple of years but what I don't think this graph shows and I think we're about to start <laughs> seeing is how you split video between linear video and interactive video as VPAID and, and Vastan sort of start splitting out so just the way we've had display and rich media I think you're going to see the same break in video and then we'll start breaking it down by screens so I think the whole way we define online video from this moment forward, probably the last time we ever see a graph like that, it has to change moving forward. The same when you kind of think of it from a wider perspective on a global. You go back a couple of years, you think about where the TV industry was, where the online industry was, you kind of jump forward a couple of years, and you suddenly realize that actually that same figure is now proportionate between online and mobile. But TV is not going anywhere but up but the difference and split between TV and online is starting to narrow as they start becoming blurred. So we're sort of seeing this massive sort of shift that's happening. And it's important because from an advertiser's perspective, from an agency perspective, nearly 60% of agencies have started to start planning TV and video, online video campaigns together. The suggestion is that from latest research that we've done, that 20% of marketers are going to join them this year alone. So that's nearly 70 to 80% of agencies need to have a way of managing and looking at sort of television and online video in a similar kind of dashboard. 
It's interesting because you know they're saying that ads viewed through the TV shows are, are forty percent more, nearly forty percent more effective when they're watched online. The whole idea of dual screen, second screen, connected video, eighty-five percent higher brand recall. Now these are all great little figures. The one figure that's got me most excited recently has been something that Beckett Reinhaus has sort of put out there. Um, you know, the general manager of marketing. She said, "Okay, here's the deal." If I do a TV campaign on its own, or I do a multi-screen campaign running on across television and online, if I do that campaign, I see my sales double. Now I could sit there and talk to you about rich media and how you get bigger clicks and more interaction rates, greater reach. When a client of a global brand says that when we do multi-screen campaigns, we see double our sales in a shop. Everything else stops, and that's one of the most exciting figures that I've seen come out of the industry in probably the last 10 years. And so I think that has suddenly got everybody up and listening and gone, really? So when a client, an advertiser, direct says something like that, it opens the floodgates for everybody. And I think this is why we're actually on a, on a thing. And they're going to drop it on you and say, well, how are you going to run my multi-screen campaigns? How am I going to manage your buy or, or convert the data? I'm sorry. So we have to start fusing our thinking. We have to start connecting the dots. And I think as television and online collide, it's going to create these massive new opportunities, these new touch points, these new data points, where you're going to start to understand where you saw, where you searched, where the consumers bought, and start to join these dots together. Because you know consumers don't work in silos. It's just us that do. And suddenly, as we start bringing these things together, it's going to open up a whole new way of looking at attribution and cross-channel analytics. So, how focused are we as a company on video? Well, we deliver more spots than anyone anywhere. We're the one company that serves most TV advertising anywhere in the world, most online video anywhere in the world, in terms of what we're sort of serving out and pushing it out across 50,000 media destinations across 78 countries. We have the largest physical storage of video assets. Does anybody know what the first um, video music, uh, you know, so the, the music video that was played on MTV? No, a little bit before that. Good guess, though. Queen, Anyone else? Garden is still alright. This is the, this. This will make you laugh when I say, "Video killed the radio star." Now, I didn't know this, but when I went around our offices in New York, we've got these huge libraries where we've been given these tapes for years and said, can you digitize them and help distribute them? And we actually have that original footage because we were actually the company that actually digitized those video to put them out there. So in our archive, we've got all these old MTV showreels of videos and stuff, which we used to look after for them and things. So as a result of it, we've started, you know, one of our brands, you know, Saucy Creative, of making that stuff searchable online. Where was it shot? Who was it shot by? Who was it produced by? And so we have this online searchable database of advertising that's relevant for people to understand how video is contained and made. We believe that convergence is, is the true convergence is TV and online. And that's important because we started the digital ad revolution. When Google was still in nappies, we were taking radio commercials and digitizing them or taking TV commercials and digitizing them. You know, we invented rich media. And so whether I'm rolling over a banner or I'm rolling over a, a second screen commercial, it's the same thing. It's just a rethinking of, of, of the same way of looking at it. You know, 80% of the TV commercials we're serving in the States. And we're still at the front of it when we have to start thinking about ultra high definition, 3D ads. And yes, we're serving 3D ads. So it's kind of crazy when we sort of look at all that and the content. And, you know, and we did the first dual screen campaign. So we've had to sort of be ahead of the game because you guys keep pushing us to be. You know, what do you want in terms of where we're at? So we're in a situation where we have to manage 10% of the world's media assets through our systems you know, for all these big brands. But for us, it's really about how video you know, advertising is moving to become video-centric. 
all advertising, whether it's TV, online, or streaming video, it's about video at the heart of it. And it's from there that we start overlaying the agency processes, the 360. It's from, okay, well, you've got your assets. How do we deliver them? Once you deliver them, it has to be across multiple screens. When it touches, it has to connect, get the data, and then how that feeds back into the system. You know, and so in order to do that, that's the world you live in. Yeah? I mean, we've all seen this in every conference, so I had to put it in as a token gesture. Right? So, but except this one was a display, and then you put another one up for video, and another one for mobile, and another one for social, and then you have social, right? Now, I work for a technology company, right? And that's the best that we've been able to come up with as an industry? No. No. Come on. It should be about, there's an advertiser, there's consumers. I have my message, I want to serve it out to somebody, and it reaches somebody. Uh, that was the right one, that's the wrong one. Okay, what can we learn from that person in order to serve out the message correctly? I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Isn't that what we've promised our clients in a nutshell? So we've had a stop and, uh, as a company and we've, we've stopped and taken a step back and said, okay, what is digital? It's about assets, it's about targeting, it's about optimization, it's about those things. Okay, put that to me in a landscape, that loomascape. Just put bubbles on a page. It's about direct response or viewability or rich media or analytics or watermarking or production, whatever these things are. And so, well, actually, if you're a media person, I just want that stuff. And if you're a creative person, maybe I want that stuff. Or maybe you're a creative for an automotive client, and you need, or a creative who's an automotive who focuses on television. Or so, really, it's a matter of how do I just grab that stuff together? And we understand that to get half of that stuff at the moment in the industry is about 50 different companies to try and get those little bits connected. And we said, no, we have to sit in the middle and start joining those dots for everyone else. And so we looked at the workflow process. We looked at the online workflow. I mean, look, it's all about you're a third-party ad server. You're a trafficker. But it's not. Digital's about data. We get the media. We get the creative. You deliver it out. It's about what the data does and how you can retarget. You look at the TV. It's similar, except for them, it's about the quality of the assets and the post-production. But it still comes down into distribution but their distribution is on satellite and internet. So when we put them together, we start understanding a vision of how media should and could be worked in a cross-media workflow. And that means I take my assets, I distribute them, and I understand the data, and that feeds back into a planning process, adapts on the fly, and distributes and goes round. But the future has got to be about assets and data, not about traffic. Let's make this really simple. TV, online, right? They're now in a world where they've started to touch. They're touching and they've started talking. And you've got the maturity of the TV production assets over here and the plethora of data, the dynamic assets over there. And they're touching across three separate areas, mobile, social, and analytics. So from a product perspective, we've said, fine, let's change our vision. Let's put assets and data at the heart of where we're going from. And around there, we're going to build two workflows, one of which is aimed at the online, and one of which is aimed at the video and television industry, which we call Video Fusion. And everything else are just ancillary services that should be equal into each one of those areas, whether it's dynamic creative optimization, or verification, or post-production, why should online not have post-production or talents management? Why should television not have viewability or anything else? So by rethinking how we see the industry moving forward, we understand that, that the online is a much more automated process with service overlaid, and the television industry is much more service-led with a bit of technology. But we expect that to change as it, as it starts to take an internet and capabilities. And we'll talk more about that over the years. So what we've done as a company is just to divide it into two divisions. But these two divisions are joined at the core. Then we can start from there building out simplified workflows. How do I get the asset into the system across screens? 
You know, it's, it's a very challenging but an interesting process, but we simplify it down in this. It's where TV spots meet online advertising. Spot on. Thank you.